We are told that in the minds of many American voters, Donald Trump has already received his holiday gift in the form of a surefire ticket to the Republican presidential nomination. Don't kid yourself, there's coal in that stocking. The fight undertaken by Trump and his fellow politicos is nothing compared to the battle being waged by one American military veteran, a man who gives an entirely new definition to courage. And the need remains to get some solid facts about what radical Islam wants and who they really are. We'll speak to one who was born where the Muslim faith rules and understand the difference between those who truly share Western values and those who hope to bring them down. One final dash of truth before the weekend gets underway. I'm Ed Berliner. This is the Hard Line for Friday, December 11th. 2015. When I said illegal immigration, all of a sudden people started thinking. And two weeks later, three weeks later, it was really a nice conversation. When I talked about what I said the other day, all of a sudden, I'm watching the shows this morning, and I'm watching the shows tonight. Well, you know, Trump has a point. The visa system is not working. We close in on those dates on the calendar where we are conditioned to think about hope for the coming year. Show courage for what lies ahead. Consider ways to make our life and that of those around us better. Not even close. Because at the moment, we are a nation gripped in fear. The fear of those who seek to do us harm. The fear of who has the fortitude to lead us into that suspect future. And fear right down to how we choose our leaders. Political fear is embodied by talk of a brokered Republican National Convention. Fear that the current poll leader will bolt and cost the election altogether. Fear on the right that at the moment, they're making Hillary Clinton and the left very glad indeed. Let's begin with the former Capitol Hill staffer, now chief spokesman for Spanish language news media at the Heritage Foundation, Israel Ortega, joined by Georgetown University professor and Republican strategist, Bradley Blakeman. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for joining us, so let's go ahead and get right to work. Brad let, me, uh, Brad, let me start with you. In Politico this morning, here it is. If Donald Trump runs for president as an independent, the GOP will lose the White House. And today I heard a number of pundits say, and I know that this is knee-jerking way aboard, but it actually was said out loud that if Donald Trump runs as an independent, 80% of America may vote for Hillary Clinton, and it could be one of the biggest landslides in political history. How worried are you? I'm not. Uh, look, this is this is fear mongering on the other side or wishful thinking. I don't know which, but I'm not so sure Donald Trump is going to be able to survive as an independent. I happen to believe he's a guy with, uh, as we say in New York, uh, short arms and deep pockets. He doesn't like to spend his own money and it would cost him dearly in order to make a point because he could never win as an independent. So if he wants to be a spoiler, it's going to cost him an awful lot of money to do it. And I just don't see that happening. And by the way, Democrats aren't out of the woods. Hillary's got a full-blown FBI criminal investigation, huge cloud hanging overhead. What if she's indicted? Then what happens? All right, now let's go ahead, Israel, and turn to this contested convention issue here. Because there's a thinking process. It really depends on who you talk to again. There are those who are saying that, look, this is never going to happen. This is all just bluster. And by the time we get to the convention, it's not a big deal. However, there's others saying that, Maybe this is a big deal, and maybe this is what the Republican Party needs right now. A little argument, a little debate, a little anger to basically clean things up. Where should we stand on this, Israel? No, I think this is a worst-case scenario for Republicans. I mean, going into a presidential election and having a, a fractured party uh, does not help them. Uh, Hillary Clinton is going to be a formal candidate. I agree that uh, she has a, a lot of baggage and there's going to be enough ammo there to attack her. But uh, I don't think Republicans want to go into next year not sure of who their candidate is. So I think this is this is why they're, they're beginning to talk about this now. But uh, I'm still not convinced um, that, you know, Donald Trump is the nominee. I think there, there's uh, an awful lot of time left before Republicans can decide uh, who, who their nominee is going to be. So, Israel, is this just a shot across the bow then? Uh, this is nothing more. This is all just talk at this point and what they're trying yeah. to do. Maybe there is supposed to be a little fear in here, but it also, I think, is fair to point out that there are people on the RNC side that are fearful that Cruz gets, or rather that not Cruz, but that Trump gets the nomination, and that yeah. could be disastrous. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, there's no doubt that there are a lot of nervous Republicans right now in Washington, D.C. Uh, they, they, they have uh, tried hard to uh, to not attack Trump, but I think behind closed doors, they're worried about Donald Trump getting the nomination. And so, yeah, I think absolutely this is this is part of the, their contingency plan. This is why they're planning and thinking about this now. But again, it's just it's just in the planning phase and it's, it's, it's very abstract. 
I foreshadow myself by mentioning Senator Ted Cruz, if you will, here. Brad, let me get to you. Big news, Iowa conservative leader Bob Vanderplatz has endorsed Ted Cruz. He's the evangelical leader here. Now, fair to say that this is the guy who also got behind Mike Huckabee and Rick Santorum, who also did not become president of the United States. But is this a big deal? Because let's face it, he's an evangelical leader here, and that's exactly whom Ted Cruz wants to get to. Look, it's a big deal in Iowa. I don't, I don't know how much of a big deal it is in New Hampshire or South Carolina or the other battleground primary states. And as Iowa goes, so necessarily doesn't go the nominee. So is it a big deal momentarily? Sure, it's a big deal. But uh, Ted Cruz has to win a lot more than Iowa if, in fact, that's in the cards. All right. Now, let's go ahead and mention Ted Cruz and a little piece of audio that's out here right now. And, of course, we're going to bring Donald Trump into the conversation. The senator refused to comment on a New York Times article with audio where he said, and they have the audio, said he didn't think Donald Trump or Ben Carson would win the party's nomination, so they released the audio. Here's what he said. The final two candidates I'll discuss are Trump and Ben Carson. Both of them I like and respect, both Donald and Ben. I do not believe either one of them is going to be our nominee. I don't believe either one of them is going to be our president. I think both of them, their campaigns have a natural arc. And... With both of them, I think gravity is pulling them down. Ah, and of course, Donald Trump wasted no time this morning. Looks like Ted Cruz is getting ready to attack. I'm leading by so much he must. I hope so. He will fall like all the others. Will be easy. Big exclamation point from Donald. All right, Brad. When I hear this audio from Ted Cruz, I think it's nothing more. It doesn't make a difference that he said it to somebody privately. I think he's just being honest. He is, but you know what? The true mark of an honest person is whether they say in public what they say in private. And when Ted didn't realize he was being recorded, and we've seen this before with Romney and others, you, you tend to be more candid than you are in public. And, and the public doesn't like that at all. And especially when you don't admit what you said and double down on what you said. Like Donald Trump, the one thing you got to give Donald Trump is nobody's ever walked out of a meeting with Donald Trump and said, gee, I wonder what he thinks. How come he doesn't tell us the way it is? We may not agree with him, but the guy is brutally honest. All right, now there it is. Israel, isn't this at the core, though, of what every time we hear about how the American electorate is upset at this point? They're upset at politicians who say things, they're caught, and they don't just come right out and admit it. So isn't this really, for Ted Cruz right now, he should come out and say, yes, I said it. Just comment on it and get it out of the way. It makes him seem bigger and may help him in the end against a guy like Trump. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think, I mean, Ted Cruz wants to be the nominee for the Republican Party. And we're less than two months out now before Iowa and New Hampshire uh, voters uh, pick their nominee. And so I think Ted Cruz has to now shift into into uh, really this new phase we're in now. And I think that is going to require uh, Ted Cruz saying what he was saying behind closed doors, that uh, if he wants to be the nominee, then he has to, sh to, to show and, and talk about why he is a better candidate than Donald Trump. And so I agree. I think, you know, he's got to he's got to make the the, the, the the case now that he has to be the one to represent the Republican Party next year. Israel, the Hispanic vote is very big. Here's two things I want you to comment on briefly, if you will. Those people who say that there's not a Hispanic vote in America that would vote for Donald Trump. That's number one. Number two, that Hispanics are not going to back Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio because they don't excite them. What's the truth? I don't necessarily buy that. Uh, there's a, tw uh, a recent poll I looked at uh, had 27 percent of Hispanics uh, supporting Donald Trump. That's not far from what uh, Hispanics did uh, supported uh, Mitt Romney in, in previous elections. And uh, don't forget, Ted Cruz uh, uh, did well with Hispanic voters in Texas. Um, so I, I think that there is uh, there is still enough time, and, and Republican Party Republican Party has an opportunity to uh, remind Hispanic voters that the Obama administration has been terrible for them. And so uh, I don't think the Hispanic vote can be written off just quite yet. There you go. Let's go ahead and put some of the rhetoric down to rest right away. About a minute left here. All right, Brad, let me come to you. Chris Christie surging in New Hampshire. The guy keeps sticking around, and there are people who believe that if he can stick around long enough, he's the guy who can grab a lot of those Trump followers. What do you think? Look, it's anybody's game at this point. Why? Is because not one single person has exercised their opinion in a, in a caucus or their vote in a secret ballot in a primary. So we can talk all we want, but until those numbers start coming in, it, it's, it's hard to gauge. But and can he last? Thing, can he last, though, Brad? He keeps sticking oh, around. You know Let me tell you something. If he comes in first or second in New Hampshire, it's called momentum. Momentum comes. People come out of the woodwork. Grassroots appear. Money starts coming in. 
it changes the game completely. We've seen this with a number of candidates over the years. Nobody likes, there's nothing more than voters like is a winner. I only got a few seconds left here, but Brad, quick question to you, and then I'll pose it to Israel. People keep saying that Donald Trump is winning. Isn't it fair to say nobody's winning yet? We haven't gotten to that stage. <laughs> nobody's winning. And the point of the matter is nobody's winning until somebody wins. There's a Yogi Berg uh, analogy. There you go. It ain't over till it's over. Israel, you agree with that? Yeah, completely. Yeah, we, we still have a lot of time. There's a lot of time left in the clock. And so it's anybody's game right now. Anybody's game. Please, let's keep saying we have to keep saying that over and over again because it keeps us going. It keeps That's us right. talking about it at this point until we get down to that last person. That's what makes it all fun in a political season. Bradley Blakeman, Israel Ortega. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to speaking to you again real soon. We talked about courage at the beginning of this show. Stay with us. We're going to introduce you to the epitome of American courage. It comes up next right here on The Hardline.